Hi, I'm Janice Lansfeld, Zontex Product Manager for the Flow Tracker 2. In this video, we'll go over some of the basic office checks you should do before going out to the field with your Flow Tracker 2. If you do these checks in the office ahead of time, I think you'll find uh, not only is it a rigorous practice and ensures uh, a better quality measurement, but it saves you a lot of time uh, and energy uh, because, of course, once you get to the field, if something isn't working quite right, uh, it's always probably more painful to be troubleshooting in the field than in the comfort of your office. Our in-office checks are going to begin with the batteries. So I'm going to make sure I put some fully charged or a fresh set of batteries in my battery holder. And what's nice is that the Flow Tractor 2 gives us two of these battery holders. So what I like to do is load one up and put it in the Flow Tracker, uh, turn it on, and then have another fully loaded um, battery cartridge to keep in my pocket or just keep with me in the field in case you need to hot swap it um, in the middle of your day. It's just nice to have that backup. Now, while the uh, flow tracker is booting up, I'm going to review what these in-office checks are going to consist of. We're going to check certain settings and um, configurations like the battery life, um, the system clock, uh, things like that, system firmware. We're going to do a bucket test uh, to see if the probe is working properly. So that's what this bucket of water here is for. All right, so my flow tracker is booted up and I'm from the home screen. Uh, I'm first going to go down to system information and just make sure that the latest software and firmware are uploaded to your instrument because we're always improving um, the software and firmware and you want to make sure that's to your advantage. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you don't know if you have the latest version of firmware on the instrument, all you have to do is go to Sontech.com uh, and you can download the latest software and firmware. Or uh, if you just look at the version number, it's shown here on the screen, if it matches what the website says, you're good to go. So I'm going to go back to the home screen after checking that. And uh, most of our in-office checks are going to be under the utilities menu. So clicking on the utilities menu, I can check my system clock to see if it's correct. I can check the recorder to see if there's enough space or if I need to format it in order to make room for the data I'm going to collect later today. I can see some details about the battery data. I can go down to raw data, and uh, I may or may not care about the velocity data in my bucket right now, but one thing that's really important is that the raw data uh, will show us, let me put my probe in the water, the raw data will allow us to scroll down and see um, not only SNR, the signal strength and velocity, but the temperature. So there's a temperature sensor in here, and I'm just going to verify that, yeah, it's room temperature here and it's consistent, good. You can also check the pitch and the roll sensor and make sure that's working. Okay, so the raw data portion looks good. And then we move down to our beam checks. Now, there's two different kinds of beam checks. There's one called the automated beam check, and that essentially means the flow tracker will uh, perform a beam check and kind of do all the analysis for you and quickly spit out uh, some parameters, okay, on beam strength, for example. And you don't really see a graph of it. Um, it, just, it just does that analysis for you. The second option uh, is a full uh, proper beam check with uh, the graph displayed. So you, the user, can assess and see for yourself what the beams are doing and uh, it's just more information. So let's go through both of them. First, I'll click on the automated beam check. It's, it's item number five here, and it walks you through step by step. You don't have to put your bucket on the table. Make sure there's water in it first, and you know, interns are good for that. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna put my probe in the bucket. Uh, now, what we want to remember when we're using the Flow Tracker 2 is that the sample volume where the, the measurement's actually being taken is remote. So it's not happening on the probe itself like some other sensors, whether they be propeller meters or electromagnetic meters. Uh, that's one of the nice things that the Flow Tracker sample volume is 
away from the instrument. Uh, about 10 centimeters, 10 to 12 centimeters, it varies per instrument. So move the instrument a little bit back towards the edge of the bucket so there's enough space in front of the acoustic transducers without hitting the side of the bucket. That's important. So I have the probe positioned properly and uh, the screen is prompting me. Uh, it should be submerged away from obstacles. In this case, the main obstacle is going to be the other side of the bucket. Um, and, and keep it vertical uh, and steady during the measurement. Okay, I can do that. I'm going to hit the start button. Now the automated beam check is only a few seconds and it will graph the data on the screen while it's happening so I can see my SNRs. You know, these are normal, they're between 20 and 30 in, in the tap water here in San Diego. And then there we go, in an instant, the instrument tells me automated beam check passed. Okay, uh, you know, that, that probably is enough to go on to let you know the probe is working properly before you head to the field. But I know some of us, we wanna see, we wanna see all that data. So I'm gonna go to the full on beam check. So item number six, beam check. And it uh, immediately starts into the beam check. And so, uh, if you remember the original Flow Tracker 1, if you're familiar with it, uh, you used to be able to connect on the computer and see a graph that represents the beam pattern. Well, you don't have to connect to the computer anymore, uh, if you haven't noticed. Uh, we're all doing this in the screen of the Flow Tracker 2. And on the screen, I can see the signal strength uh, via this peak here for each beam. Uh, on the x-axis is the range from the transmitter and on the right, a uh, excuse me, on the y-axis we have the signal strength. So does my peak look consistent? Is it of an adequate uh, strength? Are my um, red and blue, in other words, are both of my beams showing roughly the same pattern, roughly the same peak shape, peak height, peak location? And then another interesting thing you can see is another big peak um, that's, that's secondary to the first one, and that's, that's probably the side of the bucket that we're hitting. So if you think about the beam check graph as sort of a representation of what's happening physically in the bucket, uh, I think you can find it's a useful tool uh, in the office, and more importantly, in the field, when you should do this automated beam check and, and beam check again uh, just to verify or prove that your instrument's working before you take that measurement in the field. It's just nice to have um, and it's just a rigorous way of doing your data and record keeping. You'll notice here on uh, the right hand soft key uh, there's an option to record this bucket check or if you're in the field doing this to record this check in the field before you start collecting data. Just record a few seconds of data, it doesn't have to be a lot, particularly if every, everything looks okay. Um, I don't know, 15, 30 seconds of data is, is certainly more than adequate. And that's our bucket test. I think our probe is working. I, I think I've set up our handheld properly. The, the last thing you might want to consider is, uh, have you created any template files back in the office that might be stored to your computer that you want to upload to the Flow Tracker 2? Um, template files are just a convenience that might save you some time from having to do it out in the field key by key or if the, the, the sun is beating down on you. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. Other than that, I think my instrument's ready and I'm ready to go out to the field.